Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down nine. NASDAQ is up 92. S&Ps are up 10 and a half. Our guest today, folks, is George Seagull. George is a former weatherman and a reporter turned filmmaker, known for his documentary of The Last House Standing. Oh, man, I'm telling you. The Last House Standing ex explores the tragedies many of uh, many in our country contend with in the face of natural disasters with regard to flooding, structural integrity, and questions. And he questions why better construction practices aren't employed to prevent such destruction from occurring. George has won many awards, including the Miami Film Ind Independent Film Festival. Uh, the website, folks, which I have up, is the Last House Standing dot O R G org. George, welcome to TFNN. Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. This is a subject that all of us, whether we're in Florida, whether in Massachusetts, whether in California, or whether, I guess the last storm, George, in the, you know, bottom line, you know, comes up in Florida and, and basically you think Louisiana is going to get killed and New, New Jersey and New York get killed, right? So Yeah, and unfortunately what they saw there is, you know, people in the Northeast watch the storm and they go, ah, the Gulf Coast is getting pounded again. And yes. then it ends up in their backyard. And a lot of the areas that flooded up there never have flooded before. I mean, it was historical flooding. So most people didn't have flood insurance. So it's even worse than, than people around here that most of us uh, have to have it. So yes. Uh, pretty it, scary. It, it, it certainly was. That, that last one uh, was something else. So, so th this is really cool, man. I, I, th first, tell me, how did you get involved in this? How did you get to this point? Well, when I was in the news business, I used to have to cover these stories, either forecasting them as a weather forecaster or going out as a reporter going out to the scene after a disaster and meeting people that had lost everything in floods or in uh, tornadoes. And I just thought it was so sad when I got out into the, the real world away from TV news, I wanted to make a film about it. And yes. when Hurricane Michael happened in uh, 2018, that became the centerpiece for the film because that truly was in that area, the last house standing. And it's a metaphor for what you really want to strive for is having a house that actually has a chance to survive a disaster. If you notice, most of the houses around our area if they're built to code, that's not going to withstand a Category 4 or 5 hurricane. It's just going to maybe meet the code in your area, but it's not enough. It's not. And what George is talking about, folks, and I think many of us that okay, is that, that last house standing. I remember that picture so well, George, okay? that is this the one we're talking about where the, the two guys had built the house that to withstand like 200 miles an hour, I think, right? And it was the only house standing? Yeah, I mean, they were smart guys, and, yeah. and they knew that, okay, let's not build to code. Let's build to, build to survive the worst thing that could happen here. Yes. And they got hit by the worst thing that could happen there, and they survived. And the people that had the older homes or the homes that were at lower elevation that didn't go as far into the sand as his house, um, those houses didn't make it. Right. So what type, you know, and I, and I understand, you know, you, you're doing this so people can get educated and, you know, bottom line, everyone, you know, wants a house and wants the, a good house, right? So what, you know, uh, we know that people build with stick, they pe people build with block. What do you think can be done in order to basically, you know, be the last house standing that, you know, you and me and the audience will have that house? Well, a lot more than is being done right now because we still see a lot of houses going up that might have block on the first floor, wood on the second floor. Yes. And in Tampa, in St. Pete, you know, throughout Pinellas County, all those areas, those a lot. there's a lot of older homes that aren't built to withstand anything that would be a major disaster. Right. So you really have to understand what the risk is specifically to where you are and what you want to do to address it. Unfortunately, I don't think many people take it seriously. Most of us think it's not going to happen to us, you know, and if it does, we'll be fine. And that's the whole point of the last house standing film is you meet so many people that lost everything from various disasters and nobody really calculates that cost of what, what it's cost right after, after the disaster to get food and get, get your house fixed. Maybe you have to relocate. Maybe you lose your job. You have kids. You have to get them around places. You don't have transportation. I mean, there's so many things that you can't even put a price on that you really have to understand the risks. And when I moved to Tampa, the one thing I learned is most people don't understand the risk and most people don't take it that seriously. If they do, they're an outlier, but most people don't have generators. Most people don't really know how safe their house is. I would venture to say they know the safety features of their car, 
better than the safety features of their house. And I think that's pretty sad. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And, you know, what I just saying, folks, I'm sure this is right across the country, but in our area here, we have a lot of building that's going on. You got to, I mean, what, what actually blows my mind, and, and you know, it's interesting, George, I'm a GC. I build a lot of houses. And I and you'd love my houses, man. They're all blocked. They're all blocked. They're, uh, well, they're not to 160 miles an hour, but they're 140, but they are all blocked. I mean, I, I, I can show you, I just came from, three of them it just it just it, it was wild having you on because i build with block on the bottom floor and on the top floor and ripping down the the you know the roofs the whole the whole ball of wax and and it blows my mind when you see apartment buildings there are so many apartment buildings across the country right now that are all stick okay because the new deal is that you can put sticks together and you know they they're they are some of them are strong as steel but the bottom line is that a good hurricane is going to take them out so like as to the aspect of each city uh, what do you think i mean i know what we can do i know what we should do uh but the bottom line is it's really hard to turn around and change a code right that it is you know that you were saying okay forget the sticks man because you know what you know what blows my mind george and folks it's not that much more expensive. Like I build a 1923 uh, front house, a 441 back house with two car garage. It's all blocked. So yeah, maybe it cost me another 25 grand, but people will pay for it. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not, that's, that's not, and I show them the difference. I show them pictures of, okay, man, what, well, what's under that stucco is either stick or block. Do you know what I'm saying? But. I feel that as long as you show them and educate them, people will pay for that. You know what? A lot of builders don't do that. And so you're an exception and you should be rewarded for that in your business. But most builders just build what they think you're going to buy. Right. And most people, if you told them it was 25 grand more to have uh, concrete on the second floor, they probably would think, no, nah, I want to go on a boat. I want to have a trip. I want to do all these things. Yeah. And they miscalculate the importance of having those things. And, and sure, you could build a strong house out of wood. I read The Three Little Pigs, but that yep. doesn't mean that you don't want to be, have the, be the third pig and have the house that's oh. definitely going to be around. Right. And most people just, after the fact, it's too late, right? You, you, you have one chance to get it right, and we don't know. We don't understand truly what we're living in until there's a disaster. And then everybody looks around, who do I blame? How did this happen? Yeah. Well, it, we need to demand more. You need to don't buy a house that's not built well. Don't fall into that and, and reward a builder who's not doing a, as good a job. And ultimately, I think the entire Gulf Coast should be building to the standards they do in South Florida, which is to, uh, I believe yep. it's 170 100, miles yep, an hour. Yeah, it's 160, 170, exactly. And it, it's really cool, folks, okay? You know, F Florida has a lot of different things that you might like or not like, but the codes in South Florida are phenomenal. They're, they're awesome. I mean, because they've got hit so much. There's no doubt about it. You know what's really cool that I love you doing? You're really getting people to understand this is their biggest investment in their life. You'd, you'd think they would think more about it, but what I've found in life, not because I'm in the financial business too, it blows my mind that people save all their money, then they just give it to a financial advisor. It's like, well, wait, hold it. You just worked it like, and it's almost like that in the housing business. Do you know what I mean? You work for your house, well, you should understand what's in it, right? Well, the way they rate houses, prisons are actually safer than houses. My God. Oh, yeah. Listen, we got to have you on again, man. I really appreciate the education. You have a great one, safe one. We look forward to having you on again, George. Thank you.